there, Vault Dwellers. Follow us as we take a topic from the Fallout universe and discuss it in a group of diverse individuals. We are the Fallout Roundtable. Join us, the conversation has already started. Welcome to another episode of the Fallout Roundtable. I am your host, Maverick Stone. Holy crap, I got a ton of spit. It's not looking good here. It's oh not God. looking good. <laughs> uh, today not- it's just me and Sassy Lady tonight, or this morning, or whenever you listen to this podcast. <laughs> uh, we are not live at this moment, because guy who you aren't normally live isn't here so it's just us two in old-fashioned commentary but before we do that how about we how about you can you rate review and subscribe to our youtube channel the fallout roundtable just searched up on the youtube search bar Mm -hmm. simple as pie how about you also go to our twitter or x account at fallout rtb rtb send us a message over there you'd love suggestions anything great concerns awesome suggestions and how about you go to our gmail follow rtb at gmail.com and normally we are live on twitch thursday nights eight o'clock most nights PM, EST, or whatever else I'm not doing your time conversion for you. Figure that out yourself. But uh, to however long this episode takes, or the episode record. So, yeah. So anyway, let's get into this topic. I created this topic because I've been working on a Star Wars podcast the last several months now and i and i had a moment of clarity a big moment of clarity in my car for this podcast and i'm like i wonder wonder if you take outside factions out that were not originally in the fallout universe let's say you know from star wars warhammer 40k different stuff like that in and bring some of those factions in and how they could pummel everybody or how they wouldn't survive. That's pretty much down to the point. So anyway, would you like to start or shall I? <laughs> uh, I can start. Uh, so not in the Fallout universe, but still within the Bethesda kingdom. Um, all hail Bethesda. All hail Bethesda. Uh, God, mm-hmm. Todd. So uh, uh, our Lord and Savior, Todd Howard. Todd Howard. So I was looking at Starfield. Um, okay. like what factions in Starfield would be uh viable. And so I think my well, at least so far, my two uh, I don't know about my two favorites, but the two that I've completed that have a pretty good lore in the game is the free star collective and the um uh, the united colonies <laughs> i'm like yeah uh they have fought the col- the colony wars and they did so using mechs and uh big terramorph type animals <laughs> i can't think of the words like they one used uh, big animals and one used big robots. So uh, robots was, and robot. It bugs. was like lizard. It, it was like lizards versus animals. Yeah. So what's that movie that does that? Um, like the Godzilla versus the mechs. What's that movie? Oh, Godzilla versus Kong. No, or not Kong. Kong. There's a movie where they build these big. Um, oh, you're talking about Pacific Rim. Yeah, something like that. That's Pacific what. I, that's what always makes me think of it Yeagers. when they talk about their history. And they talk about how um, one side used big mechs and then the other side used uh, these genetic, you know, composed uh, beasties. 
that's what it reminded me of was like a Pacific Rim kind of thing, like these battles where they would go against each other like that. So, you know, those two factions using their weaponized animals and their big robots. So uh, that's that's what I had from that. Oh, nice. So let's talk now that you put them in. Would they survive? Or would they just be pummeled? I mean, no. I'm pretty sure the big mechanized uh, robots would be. I mean, don't you think? Because they're pretty stompy. They're, they're bigger than anything that we have in Fallout. Except maybe Liberty Prime. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel Liberty Prime could, could make, do a run for the money. Yeah, but there's only one of him. There is only one of him. Um, like multiples of these others, so... Yeah, I don't know if he can fend them all off. But if you're I, looking at like Robo Brains and Assaultrons and Mr. Handies and such, I don't. I, I, they're going to be like little toys that get knocked around. I mean, like the big mechs. Those Robo Brains are pretty smart and pretty scary at the same time. Depends on whose he, brain he, they have, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does depend on whose brain they have. It could be a pretty stupid brain. I mean, it could be. Pretty stupid. In 76, when you go build your own robo brain, you have to pick the brain. You get a description of whose brain it is, and you get to decide which brain that you use <laughs> based mm -hmm. on the attributes. Um, cool. You know, it all depends. So that's, I don't know. I think that, that the mechs would stand a pretty good chance winning. I don't know about the animals per se, because they probably. How Assault big are we talking about here? Like normal, normal size or like dinosaur size? <laughs> dinosaur size? I think yeah. they could survive maybe by eating people. Well, they might eat the people or stomp the people to death, but I think that the actual like assault trons might be able to take them out. Or like well, the nuclear weapons and stuff like that, like the fat man and stuff could probably take them out. So we're and talking heck, 76. Mutants. So we're talking 76 background where you can send nukes at people. Well, you can you can use a fat man in any of them. I mean, yeah, yes, but I'm it's not a talking tiny about like it, you know setting off the actual nuke. Yeah, that would be seventy six. But um, oh, if you're setting off an actual nuke, then probably none of them would survive. No, no. Well, I don't well, think anything can stand well, maybe, up to a nuke. Well, maybe Except queens. If we're going by your by logic here, the big. But, you know, actually, they, they might be about queen size, so that would be interesting to see a queen go against one of these genetically modified, because they're basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that, too. Yeah, but I it's, still think that the mechs would do okay. The mechs, I, I feel so like they, they could the withstand, have it. The, withstand uh, bigger nuclear, oh, for other sure. than a fat man. Um, yeah. the, just how they were built in Pacific Rim. Yeah. Um, because I love... The movie Pacific Rim, and I, I, even though a lot of people weren't a fan of the sequel, I was I, I was in that minority of I love I liked it. I didn't like the story. The story was just sort of out there. I remember seeing it, but I don't remember a lot about it. Uh sequel. John Boydega was in it. The uh, the guy who plays in the Star Wars sequel. Sequel trilogy, uh, as Finn. Um, yeah, I remember all that. I just, I, I'm trying to remember what the actual storyline was. It was ba basically, so I guess it came back. Super memorable. Yeah. Well, that's always came just, back. But they always come back. <laughs> yeah, they always come back. Apparently, they they're making the back. number three where they Otherwise, you wouldn't have a movie. <laughs> yeah, apparently, they they're making a third one. I was thinking that they were, yeah. But this time they're going there instead of the kaiju coming here, which I'm like, that's dumb. Didn't you just close the hole? Oh, so I actually watched. <laughs> Excuse me. I actually watched a show on Apple TV, and it's um, God, I can't think of the name of it now, but it's literally about the people that were trying to solve where the kaiju like. Um, Godzilla were coming from and how to keep them away from our world. Oh. It was good, actually. 
it was a little confusing in spots because it kept bouncing back and forth between like the 50s and current time. And then there was this whole time dilation thing because when they went to the other realm, really wild. But it was a good story. Just wish I could remember the name of it. Something monsters. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. But it was a good movie or show. It's a series. Yeah. It's a series on Apple Plus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, got anything else? Or should show or or do you want to alternate? No, that's that's my uh yeah, that's my first uh entry, so your turn. <laughs> okay, fine. It's my turn. <laughs> and uh on top of it, Jax is who isn't here, he gave me his his suggest hit what what faction he would do. He and I are both Star Wars geeks, nerds. Chip knows this. We we've talked while in Las Vegas last year, a lot of time at at New Vegas Days, which I thought was pretty funny at the same time, where we talked Star Wars. Uh, so, uh, hey, Jaxus and I basically were on the same wavelength with my first thing. So, mine was the Galactic Republic from the Clone Wars era. Not, you could see how it's the same. His was the Galactic M. His was the Galactic Empire. During the originals, <laughs> where, um, yeah, sort of the same branch, well, same franchise, different eras. So, mm -hmm. for, first, um, how about so, in case you don't know, this is going to turn into Star Wars Roundtable for about five minutes so I can educate you guys right. on the Galactic Republic. I don't know the nuances of, uh, everything star wars i just oh let's get I live started with star wars fans but i don't know all the little let's get started tiny. now shall we <laughs> so what do you know basics <laughs> basics got it okay i've never seen clone wars i feel like i should watch it because every time one of my one of my sons or my husband's like you know where this is from no, I really don't. It's from Blah Blah Clones War. Okay, I didn't see Blah Blah Clones <laughs> War is the is the way of life. This is yeah, the way, it. you know. It is well. I, I I saw Mandalorian, so I know the way, but I didn't see Clone Wars. <laughs> that the, the uh, mo most of my mine are from Star Wars because I've been working a lot. I'm working on a audio drama, Star Wars audio drama in an alternate timeline. Oh, cool! Of Star I like Wars alternate timelines. Alternate timelines are fun. I I did that so I could tweak things. Mm -hmm. without people being like that's not that didn't canon. happen that uh -huh. didn't happen so so i'm like yeah. i'm just gonna put no, that i get on. that cool. so and, so anyway the galactic republic during the clone wars era um they they have a bunch of big ships called vendor class star destroyers um bunch of uh support craft such as acclimator class which were mostly transports for the clone troopers and gunships and all that fun stuff. It's going to get really boring for the next five minutes. Okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, during during Clone Wars, this is the Clone Wars series for everyone listening. This is not the new Bad Batch season that just came out yesterday as we are recording. Did see that? <laughs> it. it <laughs> I watched it this morning. I didn't watch it. I just saw that it dropped. <laughs> it, it is good. I is liked it. it. I am cautious about one character that I will not spoil my opinion on because it just came out yesterday and I don't know if other people have seen it. By the time this comes out, I will tell my opinions about it after the camera goes off. So anyway, <laughs> um, so anyway, I feel the Galactic Republic would, do, would come out of hyperspace. So so paint, I'm gonna paint a picture right here. So you're you're a vault dweller or a wastelander in general. It's a nice clear blue day, let's say in the in the Commonwealth or Appalachia. You look up in the sky, all of a sudden you see poof, 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 three huge starships come out of come out of nowhere. What well, what's your first reaction? Well, that that being, don't look fifties aliens. <laughs> being being that you are a vault dweller, and you've just come out 
or so if this is if you're a 76 vault dweller and you just came out if you were born in the vault nothing probably surprises you because you've never seen half of this stuff before but if you went in as as you know before and then came out you'd be like oh my god what did the war do uh but if you were cryogenically frozen for 200 years and then came out you would be like Oh my God, what happened while I was Oh my asleep? God. <laughs> oh my so God. I don't know if you'd really be all that surprised or if it'd just be like, wow, look at all the things I missed. <laughs> wow. But it wouldn't be like if you were just like living above ground like for the last 25 years and then you saw it and you'd be like, oh my God, what was that? Because that that would be frightening. Yes. Yeah. It, during the Clone Wars era, they did not have the Death Star. That came in the original trilogy and i i come i'm on the side of they didn't the the empire should not have created the death star i feel like they should have just kept the plan somewhere hidden away from everybody to be honest because that's too much power for any one group to handle but that's just my opinion can't tell the empire that Who am I? I I they deserve I, all the power. I my allegiance is to the Republic for democracy. In <laughs> case you don't know, that is a line from uh Revenge of the Sith when Anakin and Obi Wan fight and man, I think my Liberty star Prime says it too. So yeah, yes, pro <laughs> in, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. But anyway, anyway, I feel like regular waste what wastelanders would probably freak out it it'd probably be the same way if, with jaxus's idea with uh with the star star destroyers coming out coming out and they look up and all of a sudden they're there i feel like both factions could probably dominate probably everything in star wars that the republic the confederacy probably the rebellion would probably be a little bit harder because they're more uh, hit and run tactics and uh, guerrilla style warfare, because that's just how the rebellion works. Then the Empire would probably just dominate. I don't know. I think anything that has a ship could dominate in the wasteland because what are these people going to do? Like hide like little ants on the ground, but they don't have any way to. You know, they probably don't even have any weapons that have enough range to hit anybody with the ship. I mean, I mean, let let's let's go the Liberty Prime route. What about the okay. big red laser thing? Yeah, but there's only one of him. That is true. There is only one. There's of only him. one. I mean, we're putting a lot of stress on this poor Liberty Prime guy. You know, and he's only in the capital baseland. So if you're, he, well, you know, if they attack mm, the Commonwealth or he is in the Commonwealth. Or if they go after New Vegas, I mean, he can't cover everything. He can't cover everything. He but... walks slow. I remember that from doing the march across the bridge. It's like, dang, this guy's taking forever. <laughs> I'm like, come on, come on. Like, let's go get some commies. Let's go. <laughs> let's get some commies. Yeah. Yeah. But to your point and to my point, um, uh, I feel like um, the going to now transitioning over to Jaxus's idea of the galactic empire i feel that they would more cuz the empire had different different tactics than than the republic did during the clone wars even though the empire and the galactic republic are basically the same thing but chancellor palpatine the emperor reorganized in for freedom and order there's this whole big speech at the end of Revenge of the Sith that I will not go into today. Okay. Um, I, there are different tactics. Uh, the ships are made more for orbital bombardment, where you didn't need to bring troops down unless you had to. So those star destroyers up in there will shoot down at you with with a lot of ease. And mm -hmm. they will destroy you. They have enough. They have the firepower. Yeah, that's what I feel like. No. But I feel if, like anybody who's got a ship has got a great advantage. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about the and aliens. Lasers. Yeah, a lot of lasers. Lasers. Yeah. lasers. Big advantage there over, you know, 
like the ballistic ammo that most wastelanders have. Yeah, in the Star Wars universe, there are ballistic ammo, but they're they're obsolete, pretty much because of all the what what we see in the movies and all that. I would like to bring up a third one that I feel like would be more comparable. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mandalorians. Mm -hmm. They're jetpacks. Jetpacks. Um, they're not big factions like the like the Republic or the Empire. I feel like those would be those. They would be the culture. The um, everything about them would probably be more suited for the wasteland than mine and Jax's selections for well, this whole thing. Their style seems to be a little more up close and personal too. Yeah. Like they're yeah, more willing right. to do like a hand to hand or something like that. So they seem you know, they're they seem to be a little more fair as far as the fight with the with the wasteland. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they would be more um more used to getting stuff done personally than like let's say the empire doesn't want to send their troops into battle and all the enemy is like they could probably cover a small town mm -hmm. let's say lexington for example and they can just rain fire fire from above the mandalorians would probably be more like let's go on jetpacks and let's zoom right. in and take out them raiders face to face kind of like right what? and i feel like so like if they were to attack I don't know, like the Enclave in Fallout 3 or something, you know, it's power armor versus basically power armor. Yeah, and yeah, you could say that, yeah. So they're pretty, that could be a pretty decent fight to watch because they're pretty, I, you know, I think that they'd have a chance there. Yeah, I feel with the Mandalorians, it'd be more equal, if you mm -hmm. sort of speak. It's yeah. more... um yeah, they still have their fighters. They still got their equipment, you know. But I feel like it, the tactics, the um, base of operations that they would go out. It, it's more like a camp sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm thinking like post-Empire Mandalorians, not like the Clone Wars Mandalorians where they had their own planet, where they had their planet. And yeah, I'm thinking the Mandalorian era of Mandalorians, if, you're, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that seems more fair. Well, yeah, no, no, I feel that because they they could go street by street, basically do what 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 our what happened in World War Two go street. They there'd be a lot of urban fighting. Yeah. Taking different towns, stuff like that. You know? so, I, I feel I feel like the Mandalorians are a better choice than probably the Republic or the Empire. I feel Even, like it's a like it's a fight worth having. Like it's not gonna be somebody just rolling over somebody else. I'm I mean that I'm not saying that's wrong because it's always nice to roll over a person every now and then. It's always fun, yeah. It's but... always fun, but <laughs> In the matter Especially if of you're speaking, not on the being rolled over side. Yeah, as, yeah, as long as you're not on the other side, <laughs> you are on the right side of history. Yeah. yeah. It's a good time, everybody. And it's always better. <laughs> it's always fun. Let's just say it's always good fun. Time. Yes. Ah. Ooh. I'm trying to think. I mean, we could talk about if we added dinosaurs. I was thinking about that. <laughs> dinosaurs. Like if we brought back the dinosaurs like Jurassic Park. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing just now. <laughs> like the wasteland version of Jurassic Park. Like what would that look like? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me do the line. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I can't do all that because of copyright purposes. But uh, you, you, you get the point. Not close enough. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh man, I mean, oh. so many little fun little guys that could uh, just wipe you out. 
I don't know. Uh, pterodactyls. Actually, yeah. that, it, it, that would be scary. That would be scary. If if you got... I, I'm sure you've seen Jurassic World. The the Jurassic first World, one. Yeah. The, the first yeah. one. The, the best out of the, the best one, three. Yeah. Best one out of the new three, to be honest. I'm sorry, but storyline went downhill after the I just remember movie. seeing it for the first time, like when it very first came out, going, oh my god, what a disaster. <laughs> like, that's what so happened? cool. Oh no, that's not. <laughs> oh no, there is a Starbucks. There is Verizon. There is Mercedes-Benz. Oh my god, marketing everywhere. I don't remember that so much as I just remember like, oh yeah, you know, dinosaurs, you, you, cool. That would be neat to bring them back and like have a dinosaur zoo, and then and, you know you see what happens, and you're like, that's a bad idea. <laughs> that's a really no, no, no. I've I've told my mom this, so um, I I told my mom if I ever someone ever gifted me tickets to like Jurassic World, I'd been like, no, you take that back because just my luck. <laughs> something's going to get out. Something's going to get, something's going to go wrong and I'm going to get eaten. Yeah. And I don't play like that. Nope. No like way. People who want to swim with sharks and stuff. It's like sharks leave you alone when, if they're not hungry. But yeah, then they chum the water and all of a sudden. How do you know that they're not hungry? <laughs> Ugh. That'd be really interesting, though. See a Tyrannosaurus Rex going after people and then eating people. You actually yeah. see that in the game. I still want to know, like, how they do stuff with their tiny little arms. <laughs> I don't know. Dropping stuff after I did that. <laughs> I'm like, are you trying to simulate what tiny arms going down? No, but we do that at work all the time because we're always like... Can you get that for me? I'm a little T-Rex and I can't reach. <laughs> oh, you almost made me spit, spit it out. Sorry. That's why we do it at work. Because we need we need little stress relievers <laughs> that Gosh, make people that's laugh. That's so funny. <laughs> oh. so, so who do you think out of all these characters would get eaten first? You mean out of the out of Fallout characters? Yes. Just the general wastelanders because, you know, they don't they haven't aligned themselves with anybody for protection and they just kind of have to rely on their own wit and skill and sometimes it's just not enough. I could feel that. I was talking more like named characters, you know, like Preston Garvey. I would just push oh. him into the dinosaur and say, Go get him. Marcy Long. Yeah, I could see that too. Marcy Long. She yeah. would last five minutes. No, she'd she be too wouldn't. busy standing around complaining about how smelly the dinosaurs were, and she'd be toast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which bad guy? I mean, I think that Mama Murphy would probably be one of the last to go. No, somehow what, she would just manage to make it. <laughs> somehow on Jet or yeah, what was it? I think it was Jet. Was it? Yeah, jet? she wants. She likes Jet. She likes yeah. her jet. Yeah, she she somehow would be like, I'm gone. Bye. <laughs> so she could probably just stand there right in the center of it and be like, I see a great compromise, a great fear. Like, I yeah, see. Know. Actually, I smell something <laughs> terrible. Sweetie, do you have any more jet for me? <laughs> I think. It's time to run. Yeah. I was on, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out, Mama. <laughs> uh, actually, do you know what I think would be more? Preston hard? would probably just tell the T-Rex that there's another settlement that needs his help. Uh, and I'll mark it on your calendar for He'd you. Mark it on his map. I'll mark it on your <laughs> map for you. And then the T-Rex goes on an adventure. You think? You think he would do that or he would just tell <laughs> Preston where to shove it? <laughs> nah. stick you where the sun doesn't shine. Uh, to be honest, what would be more horrifying though? Actually, actually, a T Rex going on a rampage or pterodactyls coming at you from the sky? Oh, I don't know. Probably the T Rex because I can hide from pterodactyls like in a barn or something, but a T Rex would probably just smash that barn. So I'm going to say the T Rex would be more 
horrifying. Yeah. I, I, I guess my, my whole thing is, you know, yeah, yeah. T-Rex would be more horrifying, mm -hmm. but you can hear a T-Rex coming. True. Probably feel it too. You, you can probably feel it too. And then it gives you a chance to run when you yeah. realize in your group, you don't got to be the first, you don't got to be the fastest. You got just don't want to be the last one. No, so it's just gotta be faster than you. <laughs> you just gotta be faster. <laughs> so I'm tripping the last guy behind me, and I'm booking. And yeah. then, thank you for your sacrifice, my dude. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, much. Pretty much. Yep. Ooh, yeah. dinosaurs. Gotta dinosaurs. love them. Oh, what would you do against Velociraptor? Those the cute ones with the little frilly. I mean, you cute can, or unless you want to go old school and just go reptilian, or you, you know, from the guy that says "clever girl" and then he gets eaten. <laughs> yes. Mm. But what if you're a dinosaur whisperer? You mean like Owen Grady, my yeah. my boy Chris Pratt? Yeah. What if you're What if you're like that? And you can get them to be chill with you, and then you're like, "Go!" <laughs> you know. I mean, you better hope there there isn't that the modified dinosaur from Jurassic World, mm -hmm. the the Indominus Rex. I just remembered that name right on the spot. You know what Red Bull does to you? It gives you wings. <laughs> it gives me wings, <laughs> and it gives me clarity. Wow! Wow! No, I can't no, you... say the last time I had a Red Bull. <laughs> this is my first one this week. This week? Let... Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, because this is my last one. I'm sure they make more. Oh, I'm sure they do. I ha I have another box in my car. Really well, anyway, I think it's almost time for a break. We'll see you on the other side. Hi, welcome to Three Count Thoughts. Let me introduce the crew real quick. Hi, I'm Maverick Stone. I'm Romer. And I'm Jaxus. Join us as we talk all things wrestling. Each week, we'll take a topic from the wrestling world, knock it around a bit, and then go over the week in wrestling from a strictly fan perspective. We can be found on all major podcast catchers. We can also be found at Three Count Thoughts on both YouTube and Twitter. Or you can send us an email using threecountthoughts at gmail.com. Okay, are you ready? Ring the bell. Uh, welcome back on the other side. The other side is very nice over here. I hope you uh, found a company and made stuff at home while we were gone. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's get back to our conversation about outside factions coming into the Fallout universe and seeing how they fare. Pretty much deathmatch style. <laughs> Let's get back into it. So we what we were talking sort of off about Harry Potter, the wizards. The wizards. Wizards. Bring some wiz Let's bring some witches and wizards in. Wizards. Casting spells. Broomsticks. Get a little Avada Kedavra in there. The boy who lived come to die. <laughs> I've watched so many of those memes. It's so funny. It, it, it's memes? funny. You gotta read the books. The memes? I, I've also read the books. Well, well, let me phrase that. I can't say I've actually read the books. I have listened to the books. Oh, okay. I don't have time to read. So I listen I to that. Them. Well, with as much driving as you did, yeah, you probably could have listened to all kinds of stuff. I lots, finished lots I finished the last book with my mentor. With my mentor uh when I first started at my job. Yeah. He was also he was also listening around the same same place I was, which was really weird. It's weird. 
excuse me, my computer's about to die and I was not prepared. Yeah, I think uh, some of the shenanigans that there some of these wizards can do. I mean, if you're not prepared for magic, you know, and I think I read somewhere that were like, would wizards, how would wizards fare against bullets? So, I mean, I feel like they have a shield sort of th shield. Yeah, I mean, they would just throw up Pategro, you know. And I'm not good at my spell names. Shield but, themselves yeah. from... Well, that's the shield spell. So they would just throw that up and that would, you know, bullets can't penetrate their protection spells and they could probably take those bullets, turn them around and send them on their way back to where they came from. So I think that, because I forget where I saw this debate and everybody was like, there's no way a wizard could, could uh, not... I feel like they would they would die from bullets. It's like if you could hit them, sure. But I feel I, like a wizard had all kinds of tricks up their sleeves to prevent getting hit. No, I I I would believe that they would have more tricks than just a shield charm because you also got to figure out they got a defense against lasers and Yeah, different... lasers might be more tricky cuz I don't know if I mean, I don't like know if those their shield laser charm muskets. Can, I mean, I, I would think that it could, well, if it can prevent a spell, it should prevent lasers, right? I mean, as long as, you know, if you look at, watch the movie, I'm going to base this all on the movies because I don't remember what most happened in the books, even though I read them. Well, it's also more visual, so you see Yeah, like, it's more, more visual. visual. You, you would see, especially in the Deathly Hollows Part 2, the Battle of Hogwarts. Right. You would see that they're doing like one of these, and all of a sudden the the shield thing is go is mm -hmm. breaking all around. I feel like that would be the same way with like a wizard, yeah, with the with, lasers, lasers hitting the yeah lasers hitting the shield. Yeah, I feel like that would be the same way. But mm -hmm. please, Wizarding World fans, please do not come at us if we get it wrong. Well, I'm one we, of those we are, Wizarding we, World people, but I we I still are, feel like I feel like yeah. the wizards have it on. You know, just regular weapons. I I feel that they would find a place in the ecosystem. I don't think they would have a sizable advantage, but I also think they wouldn't just get pummeled beyond the wrong side mm. of history either. Not at all. Not no. At all. Mm -mm. No, I feel like they they have enough to be able to take care of themselves, and enough to. Probably intimidate enough people. So you're saying they're going to turn into a different type of raider? Well, they don't... I mean, if they want to be raiders, they could, sure. I, I mean, it, it, going by different factions of wizards and witches, if we go Grindelwald's faction <laughs> versus... You would definitely be a raider. <laughs> yeah. That would people, be it, yeah. People think but it's I mean, weird it, that I know my stuff in Harry Potter. Followers too. of... Of Dumbledore, you know, I don't, Dumbledore's army. I feel like he would, you know, they're not in for the, the greed. I feel like they're just in for protection. And so I don't feel like they might be more like a responder. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Unless, unless we're talking after the Order of the Phoenix. Was it Order of the Phoenix or was it when, <laughs> when, Professor Dolores Umbridge, or what I like to call her Dumbridge. Dumbridge, because I never liked the character. She ranks very high up on my um, on my hate list as much as Grand Moff Tarkin in the original. She was, she was I, terrible. I she she's up there with Grand Moff Tarkin, and that says so much to nightmares. her nightmares. I mean, anybody actress. who. Who causes a child to bleed while making them write sentences is terrible. <laughs> they're they're the devil personified. Yes, yeah, she is, mm -hmm. and she does so with kitty cats, with kitty cats and all glee. pink bows in her hair, I and mean, <laughs> and a whole bunch of pink. Yeah, lots of. Pink. I I like pink, but that's too much pink. Well, that was the whole point. Was like. She's supposed to be so feminine and girly, and yet she's so evil. It's yeah, and she won't talk big about... juxtaposition. You think it... she's going to be, like, soft and 
and sweet because she likes kitty cats and pink and she's like the devil. <laughs> she's like the devil wearing a sweater. The devil wears pink. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the devil wears Prada, but that's a totally different thing. It is a different thing. Totally different movie. That's totally a totally different, different movie. Totally. <laughs> That's a totally different, different actress. <laughs> but going back to what I was t saying earlier, um, that that's you got to credit that to the actress. I don't remember her name exactly, but you got how much hatred she got from the everybody, pretty much. After I don't know, she just played Queen Elizabeth, so yeah, that is true. The yeah. crown. Oh. Speaking of exactly. Queen Elizabeth II, did you know she actually she. The Queen herself was in a James Bond movie. I don't, I don't think I knew that. Yeah, she was in a um, Daniel Craig when Daniel Craig was uh, James Bond. Uh, she played herself, ironically, in a Shocking. James Bond movie. That kind of surprises me in a way, but in a way not because she was kind of about uh, promoting the family and being. Letting the people see like what they were about. Transparency, I think. Yeah, yeah. And she actually had talking lines. Lines in the movie. And she actually... Because I, I, I was bored a couple months ago. And I was reading. Oh, yeah. I was reading. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, I was reading. Or it was a YouTube video or, or something. Or some <laughs> short Probably or something. Probably a YouTube video. <laughs> And somehow I got onto it, and I'm like, "Huh, that explains why why it looks so good." Because I I remember watching the movie. I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember which one of his it was. I think it was Quantum of Solace or Casino Royale. Where I'm like, that can't be the real queen. Turns out it was, and I was completely dumb dumbfounded by that. Which also right. cool. Apparently, according to the director, she was very cool, cool about it too when she was on set, playing herself with Daniel Craig as James Bond. I guess if you're gonna play somebody, playing yourself is probably the easiest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just most people aren't cool enough to be played, <laughs> but but except for her. <laughs> yeah, long live the queen. Yeah, yeah. I thought for sure she would live forever. That's what everyone said about Stanley too. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah. And Betty White. Betty White. And Zaveras. I know, right? So wizards. Let's go back to wizards. wizards. I think wizards would do well. I, I feel like they would find their own little town or like base and and just Probably, I mean, they kind of did that. In the at Hogwarts, in the Hogwarts. I mean, the Harry Potter world, whatever Wizarding world. You know, they kind of do their own thing. They've got Hogsmeade. They've got Diagon Alley. They don't really go shopping around London. They shop in uh, Diagon Alley, which is like their own place, and it's hidden away. So you yeah, know, they try to avoid the, the ministry. Muggle. The, the ministry was buttholes about it, but that okay. that's my whole separate. Well, they, you know, the the Wingat, the Wizarding Wingat, whatever, decided that. Uh, they needed to protect was, themselves and have it, the secrecy. I think it was Grindelwald that caused all that. Well, was it Grindel Grindelwald? I think they were living in secrecy before that, but Grindelwald wanted to uh, change that that balance of uh, wizards having more power and being uh, like ruling over the muggles more and coming out because... They had been living in secrecy, and I think he wanted that to go away, and he wanted to make wizards more powerful, and therefore they would rule, and muggles would just kind of have to go along with it, rather than them hiding in the darkness and and not letting anyone know who they were, and not letting muggles know that there is magic in the world, just, you know, letting them this blissfully, that, yeah. I feel like wizards... Going extremely off, off topic here, but I feel wizard. If you notice in the movies, you never like the Weasley house is out in the countryside. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of these places are out in the middle of nowhere, 
And I well, feel like that's by Hogwarts design. Is hidden. So if yeah. anybody were to stumble across it, it's, it's enchanted so that muggles can't find it. It's, it looks like a plain mountain. Mm -hmm. It just looks like a mountain or like a lake. Like muggles can't see it. Muggles can't see so. it. We're muggles. We couldn't see it. Now speak for yourself. I'm not a muggle. <laughs> I am a muggle. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I have a gun. My where... my two biggest geeks. That's my Fallout shelf, and that's my Harry Potter shelf. Okay, so going also off topic here. My my two gig biggest fandoms. So as you can see, my black curtain here. <laughs> I'm I'm adding. I'm going to be adding shelves back here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up here, mm -hmm. and then down here. Everyone in audio version, you can't see. You're going to have to look on the you YouTube can't see side. His black curtain. You can't see my black curtain, but it's I'm adding curtain. shelves. It, it's not. It's not painted. We're gonna. We're actually thinking. Of, I'm actually thinking about painting the black back wall. Putting so shelves. It won't be a curtain anymore. It'll just be a black wall. Yeah. <laughs> black curtain. Yeah. Well, that seems a little more permanent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're. I'm thinking about moving. Isn't you know. I thought you were getting like a whole room or something. Yeah, I still am. It's just around the corner. It's got. It's got stuff in it. Right now. And and I gotta redo the floor. But I'm getting extremely off topic. So uh do you think that we've done everything we can with wizards or what shall we continue yeah. wizards? Yeah, I think I think I think wizards are where you know, it you, just depends on if they wizards? wanna do like they do in you know typical Harry Potter verse where they live in secrecy. In the wasteland, or do they want to go the Grindelwald venue and decide that they want to um, have the power, have the power, not live in secrecy and rule the people? You know, uh, uh, we're not talking about Voldemort. Voldemort has his own separate issues that don't apply here. Well, Just we're assuming Baldi's gone because Baldi was defeated in the 90s or early 2000s. So, yeah, around Before we move on, though, <laughs> which Grindelwald was better, Johnny Depp or Lars Mikkelsen? They both had their, they both had their positives, but I don't know. I think Johnny Depp just has a special kind of something. I... I agree, but at the same time, I'm like when when they changed over, mm -hmm. I'm I'm like. At first, I was like no, but at the yeah. same time, but at the same time, I'm like, he, he did something right. He did. He he did. And honestly, control. when you read his his like his visual fits better. Yeah, besides being all white and ghostly, right? It's just I don't know. Something about Johnny Depp just plays a crazy person just really well. Like somebody who's like... Or a drunk person. Just a little off balance, you know, just a little off. He plays that so well. And I hate what happened to his career. It's coming back. Yeah, I'm seeing him in a couple of things. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a lot of, lot, I mean we're not getting any more Fantastic Beasts movies and, you know, Disney. Well, because, yeah, Disney sort of blackballed him. Right. But they want him to come back to be Jack Sparrow. And he's like, nah, you guys fired I mean, me. would you? I mean, they dumped all over him when they didn't even have a kid. You know, he was guilty before proven innocent. That's not fair. No, I, I see where he's coming from. But I do. It, su I, it sucks for us. It, because it sucks we're not gonna for get, the rest of us because yeah, we're not going to get. A, there's not going to be another Jack Sparrow. He's ever. not going to get the ending he wants. No. That's but, the main thing is But I feel like ending. I mean he was he was done really dirty. I mean Not. this country is supposed to be founded on innocent until proven guilty, and he was guilty until proven innocent the whole ride through. Just because everybody was like, and this is gonna be probably a hot button thing because everybody's like oh you have to believe a woman uh, you know, because a lot of women don't get heard ironically 
Amber Heard. <laughs> did you see, did you, during that whole thing, I think it was, was it last year? I think it was two years ago. Sometimes, you know, women are crazy. Yeah, women are crazy. Not Believe all of them. Me. Well, not, not all. Case, okay, not woman, all of them. But this one certifiable. was crazy. Certifiable, crazy. Yeah. Did you see, I don't know if and you yet, saw her this. her career, sh nobody took any roles away from her. They well, if you noticed in Aqu him. in the new Aquaman film, she's barely in it, and you but haven't they, heard her. They cut sense. her, yeah, they cut her, but um, and she's not going to be in any any future DC movies either. Well, no, not after all that fiasco. No, but no, hell no. like while it was going on, you know, everybody just chopped him. You know, they're like fire, fire, fired from everything. You know, before it all came out. I think but the only, her, only thing that stood behind him was was his perfume. Mm -hmm. Dior stand behind him still. So so like, that's I, I all just, he does. Pretty I much still now. think that you know, like nobody knew the whole story, and you know, like I feel you know, like they're, I always they're say that there's two things. sides to a story, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. But you know, yeah, I feel I feel. And and after this, I'm gonna cut this off because I don't want to yeah. talk about this trial because it's old no. news at this point. But That's really my horrible. my hot thing is um, going with it is they they they're probably wrong on both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was more wrong on one side than the other, and justice prevailed in our justice system for the first time in a long time. I don't yeah. like getting I don't like getting political. I don't like any of that stuff. As long as I have a roof over my head and I, there's no war out on my front yard yeah. and I can pay for stuff and I'm not in a depression, I only see just the marble still spinning. That's my whole outlook on life. So, yeah, let's move on to my last thing. And then we could probably, I think we, we were going to talk about our uh, Fallout R RPG for a moment before we end the episode upcoming teasers what, upcoming what? teasers upcoming teasers <laughs> yeah upcoming teasers to our show um so my i i've been looking into warhammer 40k because i have a friend who won't stop talking about it and he wanted me to get into it and i'm like i will do it if you stop talking to me about it for a good five minutes and talk about something else. So I did. I I owned up to my own thing. And then I found something that I think would go great because it's sort of similar to, to the Brotherhood of Steel, but they're a lot more cultish and they love their emperor. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, hmm. for the emperor, ah. Uh. Ah, uh, for the upper ah. Uh. Uh, the emperor ah. Uh. Yeah. You want to talk about space marines? No, not about... really. Not really. I hear enough about space marines. <laughs> We're going to talk about some space marines. <laughs> which faction? Which space marines? Which, which, which faction? Fan? Which whatever. <laughs> oh, great. I have this See, really I d cool dragon that I get to play with. That's cute. So cute. Glory like to the a, Emperor. He's like a fiddle thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's cool. Yeah. I like him. So anyway, we're, I was going to talk about the, uh, the... The... It's called the Imperium of Man. They serve mm -hmm. their Emperor. The Space Marines. It's, it's basically... Beats Marine. Marines. Basically, they're the... For people that aren't War Warhammer 40k li illiterate like I am, I don't know much about Warhammer. I'm just starting to get into it because I started looking into it last week. <laughs> last week. <laughs> Not in preparation for this episode, but I just thought of it right off the bat while we're doing this. I'm like, hey, I've been looking at this recently. Space Marines. <laughs> Space Marines, where they're superhuman warrior monks. No oh That's literally what it says. They're warrior monks. Warrior and, monks. That's uh it. for the Imperium of Man. Or for short, I think it's just the Imperium. Yeah. 
um, you probably have a little bit more because you do little faction stuff, but. No, I, I, so when my husband and I first got together, I was like, well, you know, let, let's, uh, find something that we can do together as a hobby that, you know, and my husband was into 40 K and I was like, that's cool. Um, the models are neat. I could paint those. Um, I like to, I could build some terrain, but I'm not playing this game because there's too dang many models and too big the armies. It's So, super big. <laughs> Those models can and you get have to huge. roll buckets of dice. And I was like, yeah, nah. And the guys It's who played D&D &D got on way steroids. too into it. Way too into it. It's D&D &D on steroids, but... And, it, and I'll I, tell you, I have GW a... stuff is so expensive. No, you're not wrong. Mm -mm. Oh, my gosh. And it's funny because that's the game that when people, like, quit, they always go back to it. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, And they always it's complain like about an how X. expensive it is. Yes, It's, it's like it an is. X. They, And they always complain about how expensive it is, and then they always go back to it. And I'm like, um, you knew that. That's why you quit the first time. So yeah, my husband has boxes of that crap. He has Necrons. He has Spith Marines up the wazoo. He Spice has Marines. Imperials. He has... Shit, he's got ton of stuff. stuff. Beyond stuff, beyond stuff. Uh, I was, He's I was either been all thinking, the books. I was either thinking the Imperium or or the Get out UNS the books. or U or the UNSC from Halo Necrons, because man. Bugs. bugs, space bugs, bugs, space bugs. space bugs. Those would do it. So I'll also also I was either thinking about the UNSC because I've been watching the Halo TV show, this series. Oh, yeah. I was totally Yeah. tired of this one. <laughs> Yeah, it's not the best, but it's Did you see that they're making a movie out of um Borderlands? Borderlands, Yes, yeah. I saw the trailer. I'm like, why? <laughs> Why? well, I mean, when everybody saw, I guess when they saw how successful The Last of Us was, now we got to make something out of every video game. So, Oh, you know, and, Fallout's and doing after it. Fallout. Now everybody's got to jump on that bandwagon. But unlike Fallout, It, that's a that's going to be a series where this is going to be a full length like, feature movie with Kevin Hart as its lead role. Movie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart <laughs> it's I didn't realize Borderlands was a comedy. I didn't realize that I have you seen <laughs> the trailer for this movie I have not watched it yet. I just saw, I have seen I keep seeing this it on trailer Twitter that everybody's like, Borderlands movie. I'm so excited about Borderlands movie. I've seen this trailer. It looks hilarious. Yeah. Because so so who according from what I've seen in the trailer, it's uh Kate Blanchett's in it. Um Oh, okay. Jack J Jack Blatt is playing Claptrap. They've got some good names in it. Uh Kevin Hart and another uh another actress that I can't remember her name, but she 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 looks sort of new. Or there It's basically what they're doing in the game. <laughs> they're looking for the vault. So it's just basically they're just telling the story of the game. It I'm kind it's of sort glad of that yeah. I'm kind of glad that Fallout's not doing that. I'm glad I'm that glad, they're doing a completely yeah. original story that they're not doing a And it's like all gonna be canon. That's like Todd the whole Howard thing. said that it's they're not just gonna tell the game because we've all done that, you know. We've seen that done that, but Yeah, you know. I'm I'm glad they're not doing that. Because I do want to see something different. I don't want to be like, oh, I guess I should have done that on my playthrough, you know? I don't want Oh, that's the canon now. to Right, like I Oh darn. Well, I didn't do it that way. Obviously, I'm wrong, you know. Honestly, so going Because everybody to the Fallout has their TV own show. way of like doing stuff. Like when you go to the wasteland or you go, you know, like like you're at the Capital Wasteland, for instance. Like right now, I have yet to fix the um radio tower for three dog. I haven't done it yet because I'm kind of in a hurry to find my dad. Because I actually decided that this playthrough, I'm actually just going to find my dad. I'm not going to get sidetracked by things that don't matter to me, right? So to my character, that doesn't matter to me to, like, fix the radio station. To So me, to me, I haven't done it. for Fallout 3, and this is to everyone out there, I have not finished Fallout 3. I can't get past, um, I never have enough ammo.
because it's all about the weapon breaking, and I I always seem to get ammo for the wrong gun. Let me phrase that. I have ammo. I just buy it. I just buy it. That's the thing, though. The ammo that I that I can buy or whatever, it's not for the right gun that I use. Well, I have about or there's not at least enough three guns. I have at least three guns that I need to use in case I run out of ammo or like one dies or something. So pretty much in my inventory, the last time I played number three, mm -hmm. Fallout Three, is it just a bunch of knives? Well, if you're playing melee, that's probably all right. Well, I'm trying not to. That's the problem. Uh oh. Because I never have enough ammo, so I'm going at a death claw with basically a steak knife. <laughs> with basically a bunch of steak knives and or or like um when when you're going into well, I think it's Grey Ditch. With those yeah, with all the ants. Yeah, with all the ants, all all I'm doing is going at these ants with who who shoot flames at you with a steak knife where I can't do nothing about it because I don't have enough ammo. I haven't done that yet either because, like I said, that doesn't mean anything to me like right I, now. I, because... I don't know how you would miss it, though. It's on the no. way. Because, well, I haven't gone through Great Itch. Um, and I did talk to the kid, and I was like, yeah, dude, I'll help you out when I can. But I, like, I went... I, didn't, I haven't been through it. I I went around... I went through uh, the, where the Super Duper Mart, Mart is, and I think Great Itch is like the other direction. Well, if you go past Super and Duper Mart and over you the go bridge, too far, you, then yeah. you're in Great Itch. Well, I, I went over the bridge and went in towards D.C., and I went into whatever metro tunnel is right over there. and yeah, The went, metro tunnel. You got to go towards... through there. St stabbing ghouls, though, is pretty fun. It's probably better than just shooting them because, you know, some of them, although my, my skills are getting better, or my gun's getting better or something because they're, or vats or something because they're, they're getting, I'm getting better at one-shotting them mm -hmm. with vats. No, it's so, hard to kill. The glowing one, I just ran into the first glowing one and I totally forgot about how those things will like heal. Yeah, the yeah, that'll heal. When they burst, and it's like, oh my god, you gotta kill that thing first. But he holds back while you get attacked by the other ones. So it's like, I really want to kill him first, so he stops healing the other ones. But they're like the ones that are clawing at your eyeballs while you're trying to kill him. And it's like, oh. It's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's annoying, but that's part. Of, that's fun. a part of the Fallout lifestyle. It's been fun point. going back to 3, because it's been been a hot minute since I've played Fallout it's 3. been a hot minute for for <laughs> three in general to be honest yeah. I think it it was the last decade it's been out I just gotta keep remembering to go back and periodically save <laughs> before I get into big battles because you know that one always bites me in the butt when I get like mauled by super mutants and it's like oh crap I died wonder how far back I'm gonna go <laughs> Yeah, because uh, yeah, Fallout Three is is twenty years old. If I'm reading this right. I don't know. Maybe two thousand eight. It came out. Almost getting there. It's getting there. So, so it's about let's say sophomore year of high school. Well, not for me, but <laughs> it's sixteen years old. Yeah. I'm trying to think of when I first played it. No, no, no. no I was just trying to, because th that's how I associate things. If it's 16, it's in high school. 2008 was when we moved here. So let me think. Connor was only four, because I didn't start playing until he started playing video games. So it's probably about 10 years after that. So he'd probably been out for about 10 years when he played it. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> I say this like every other episode, but no one knows how I got started in Fallout. I wasn't there for that episode a long time ago. Yeah, and then you recorded it, and never released it. <laughs> I try. I I tried to so record. Tell it on us my phone. how did you how did you get into Fallout? Oh, uh, as well reveal. I now. might as well reveal now instead of talking about RPGs. Let's 
let's get personal for a minute here. Yeah, how did how did you get started in Fallout? Okay, Math. so I, so I was in high school. I was it was after four came out. Uh, my mother did liked single player games more than multiplayer games because of I sometimes talk too much, to be honest, and she was being protective for a reason. Not not like helicopter parent, but you know what moms do. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't technically get into Fallout until like a junior year of high school. After everything had come out, pretty much. Except 76. 76 hadn't... I don't think 76 had came out. No, it didn't come out until 18. Yeah, yeah. It came out while I was in college. So, um, I got... I first got three. I did not get New Vegas at first because I wasn't into the whole Vegas. And I had I had pro personal problems that I will not go into. So, um, so I got three, actually mom got three for me, but I didn't get the game of the year edition of the game. I just got the regular because I'm like, I don't need that. Totally not thinking of all the DLCs and how much I saved on money. Yeah. Save on money for everything. So I play three, as you all know from earlier in this episode, I never actually finished three. I moved on to four. Um, after 76 had came out, after I got out of high school, finished three vanilla, what, what, what the gamers call vanilla, no mods, nothing. No mods. <laughs> just to, just to silence everybody when they ask, because now I mod the whole thing up to Wazoo because there are some pretty cool mods in four, to be honest. There is. <laughs> There, there are some really cool mods and everything. And cooler ones to come. Yeah, a whole lot cooler ones to come for certain things. Certain consoles and PC. I think it's more PC. PC. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I think I was, it was, I was a freshman in college when I got four. This time I got the game of the year edition. I, I learned from my mistake. No, it just it's like you said, you just you save money. You yeah, I save money. <laughs> I save my actually I don't yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, everything had come out. Cause at first I'm like, I don't think Nuka World came out at the, when I got it. But I'm like, no, no, they were already into 76. They're already promoting 76 and all that stuff when I got four. Uh, so everything, all, I think all the DLCs for four were out. So I got everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I went there. I I finished that game, through and through. Started modding it, like everyone else, like a lot of people do. I I got actually a friend got me seventy six. One of my best friends who I still talk to, or at least I tried to talk to. To this day, he actually got me the collector's edition, one of the collector's edition of 76, because he was trying to get into Fallout, and he knew I was into Fallout, and I was playing a lot of Fallout at that time. I tried to get him, I tried to teach him everything that I knew for 70, well, for 76 and everything. He dropped out because he just couldn't understand it for some reason. He works differently. He's a lot more geeky than I am. Um, so I played 76 before before Wastelanders and all before everything changed the map. So I saw the raw space station. I saw all that. Mm -hmm. I saw the original map as it should be. I was in that minority that I was like, this is fun. This is cool without I mean, I was sort of like, it'd be cool to have an NPC or two, but this is cool because it was a huge map. Yeah, it's still a huge map. It's just they've it's added still a, lot a huge map. Yeah. yeah, I dropped off seventy six after when 
I think it was no, because I came back after Wastelanders, so I got bored really quickly because it was an online. Did you drop out before uh, Wild Wastelander? That was when they brought in Biv, and you could start making moonshine no, or moonshine, no, make your no. own beverages. No, it was. I think it was at, right after Wild Wasteland because I came back for. I came back for when all the P NPCs came back. I came back for that. I played it for a good couple months, and then I dropped out again. I came back recently, actually. Not that long ago. So my character's really low because I hadn't been playing it forever. I think mine's like at 25. Well, just watch uh, Night Taylor. You know, and we got double XP weekend this weekend. Yeah, I know. But I have to plug in. I, I would have to plug back in my Xbox. And then uh, do all the buffs and lunch boxes and just go go to West Tech Experience Center and level up like five times level at a queen up event. And <laughs> Twelve times, maybe. Um so anyway, yeah. And then two years ago from the beginning of this month. I I started actually me and another guy started Fallout Roundtable because I'm like I want to talk about this. Then he dropped out. We still talk a little bit, not much anymore. He sort of dropped off the face of the earth. Um, and that's when you came in. Hey. Yeah, that's when well, all you, of us. Yeah, all of you guys came in because I. For all of you that don't know, I actually came up with an application, mm -hmm. did several rounds of interviews, mm -hmm. and then I was, I'm going to be honest, I was originally going to cut, I was going to cut two of you. Well, yeah, you were interviewing for one person. No, I knew I, that. No, actually, I was going to interview for two people. I came oh, up see, I thought you were people. interviewing for one person, and then... Um... You ended up taking three or four, I guess. Four. four. It was four of you guys there. Yeah. I was going to drop two of you in my last set. Then uh, then we all got on a call together. We sort of, we really had fun, sort of clicked all together. I'm like, crap, I can't do it. <laughs> so, and then 79 episodes later. Probably more because I'm not counting all the bonus stuff. Oh yeah, here we more. are. So that's my my life story according to Fallout. Your Fallout life story. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we have it, folks. Now you have all of our stories for. Yeah, yeah. My how we how we got into Fallout later. Mine of course, you'll have to like dial way back to hear the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, way. Back I wasn't the, there in the single digit episodes. I think. <laughs> I think it was. Pretty sure it was early. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, I think it was episode. No, because our first episodes pretty were. Early. Those were the faction were, ones. The faction, the faction episodes, which I still have the bracket for that. <laughs> I still have the bracket. Um, that's the one thing I wish I would have done later, but it's out there. We could do that again, but we should do it with other people. Like bring. I I thought about make that. Them do it. I I I'm still considering it to be honest. And this is it would be interesting to see peaks. what other people say. Yeah, this is this is for sneak peeks for later on this year. So like, if it's something that you're interested, like let me know. Get you on. Like if you're like, yes, I am all about that bracket. I'm all about that the pit bracket. factions against each other. Yeah. Death matches. Yes. Then let, D and D no. get you on here when we get enough people and pull it together. Or if yeah. you have any other ideas that you want to discuss, let me know. We'll get you on here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not like we've run out of ideas because I st I still have that piece of paper. Yeah. I still no, we do. still have ideas. It's just that it's fun to hear from you guys like what you want to talk about and. You know, that's we what we're here lists. for. 
We have That's lists. what we're here for, to talk about what you want to talk about, what you want to hear. So anyway, I think we can end that our episode here tonight. I know we were all over the board tonight with our outside factions and everything, but Outside made... factions lead to outside topics. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, outside factions lead to outside topics. How dinosaurs eat people. Um, yeah. Uh, how how wizards, how wizards can defend themselves. themselves. <laughs> uh, Johnny Depp and Lars Mikkelsen. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. <laughs> this is more mayhem. That This is what we do. It's just who we are. <laughs> it's just how we are. So I've been... I think it's time to call it a night or a morning evening whatever whatever time of day it is um i i've been maverick as always that has been sassy lady to my whatever side it's on or whatever whatever side of the car or whatever you're hearing this from and uh we're gonna say good night or good morning or whatever i'll say good night <laughs> good morning this podcast is part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club, a program designed to help all podcasts reach their full potential. For information about joining the Robots Radio Rocket Club, check out robotsradio.net.